What's going on guys, Kaivox here, and Mikachi will be joining us at some point. Well, I hope she does, just because uh, we're, we're basically gonna be making something for her today. If you guys uh, know Mikachi at all, you know that she just like loves puzzles. She got this gigantic puzzle somewhat recently, like six months ago, and she's been trying to do it, but our setup, like the space, it's too big. It's like, I think four and a half by something. Um, she may explain a little bit better uh, once she comes on, but I'm gonna start the build now, and then um, she'll come in and kind of explain her part of it. Uh, it's mostly just gonna be, we're gonna be taking the frame actually for the table that I'm using, because I bought this table a while ago, but I, I just wanted the top, because I had some other legs that I wanted to use, so I wanted the top. I didn't need the legs, but I couldn't just buy the top. I thought in Ikea you could do that, but you can't. So this may not apply to all of you. It's not gonna exactly be a tutorial, but you may get some ideas from this video. Um, I'm basically taking the frame, building out from it, and then making a new top for the top. It's not gonna be a fancy furniture grade uh, table or anything like that, but I think it will be a pretty awesome big old puzzle table or pretty much anything else that you would want to do on it, but it's going to be specifically for for doing puzzles. <sighs> so um, let's head over to the other room where it's going to be. This room's a little messy and it's not properly treated for videos and stuff, so it may look a little, a little rough, um, but it's mostly just going to be for her doing the puzzles in there. Uh, so yeah. All right, so here we are. This is where we're going to make the table. Um, granted, we already have legs. So let me, let me show you what I'm talking about. We actually got this um, at Ikea. And like I said, these are the legs for the table that I use in, um, in our videos. That right there is gonna be the top, um, but <laughs> it's not gonna be just this one piece. It's actually uh, two pieces. So the goal is to make a top for this that is seven, by five. I have some uh, rough, <laughs> rough little blueprints here that I made. And uh, this was <laughs> math <laughs> that I was trying to figure out. And um, I, I hope it comes out decent. So originally what she had in here was um, those pieces of melamine, I think it's called, or like whatever that like um, particle board, thin stuff. We had it on here. We had some supports trying to, to support it, but basically what was happening is it would just, it would j jiggle jiggle too much. And um, it started making her dizzy. So therefore she couldn't do it. So uh, the plan for today is gonna be, we're gonna basically make like a subframe for, um, for the table itself. And then, um, after we do that, we will put those two pieces of plywood, which I had to get two eight foot sheet, eight by four feet sheets, eight by four foot sheets that, um, that then I had to cut down, which um, if you guys don't know, you can get a lot of wood cut at your uh, big box store if you, if, you, um, if you don't have the tools for it at home. For most people, all you would have to do is get like one four by eight sheet and just put it on top of a table. The problem with this table that we have here is that it is too small. It's a basically like a one person table. If you're just trying to do a, um, like a big table or a big platform to do puzzles on and you need more than what you have and you have a pretty decent like dining room table, you could just get a piece of, um, plywood and plop it on there if you really want to or maybe two pieces and put them on like the long like if the table's like this put them on this way and maybe some weights in the middle somewhere to kind of keep them from tipping to the side this table is only four foot by about two feet so it's pretty small and we're trying to make it <laughs> like a million times bigger than that uh, it's gonna take up most of this room. Don't mind the messy room. Uh, this was the room that I used to do all the woodworking. You can see I still have some some stuff right there. Let me go over some of the things that I got. I will put a uh, full list of the things that I'm using. Granted, this 
DIY video is really not going to apply for everybody. Um, for the most part, because I have to do something specific because of the way that this frame for the table is. What's nice is that it's metal, so I don't have to worry too much about that. So this is looking at it from the bottom. You can see it has these holes. It was supposed to have some through bolts that go all the way through into the top itself, and the top would just sit right here. The way we're going to do it is we're going to use those through bolts, and we're going to actually drill out. We're going to drill out some holes here that line up with these holes. So basically like that, it's going to come through and then we're going to put the through bolts through the bottom. Let me try to explain that one more time. Um, we're going to put this here. Okay. This is going to be basically the base frame for uh, those pieces of plywood. If we don't have some sort of um, something to bolt onto, it's going to be a lot tougher for the top to stay stable um, because where we're going to have it is going to have one half on that side the other half on this side of the table so this these bolts are going to go right so these bolts are going to go right through here you can see it there so this is the threaded insert that we will insert let me let me put it in the right spot so we're going to drill a hole right here and put it right at the bottom there boom and then it'll be like that that will go through. It will thread into this and then hold this frame together. We're going to be using pocket holes for the jointing of all of these pieces. And then we're going to drill through the top um, into these to hold the top onto this. And then we'll have a subframe. And then uh, or we'll, we'll have the whole thing together at that point. But the frame will then be attached to the top. So if we needed to take this apart, the idea is we could just remove these screws from down here, separate the frame from the subframe and the table. So the table would, or the top would stay on here. I hope this is making sense. I may make another video in the future if you guys have any other questions about this um, once I'm done. I'm gonna try to answer and kind of explain as much as I can while I'm doing it so that you guys know uh, why I did something or why I think I'm doing something. <laughs> I'm not a furniture maker, so I don't know a lot of the, uh, the tricks and stuff. This is just a simple um, kind of smashing your head up against it until you figure it out. Realistically, you probably don't need to fasten it to the actual um, frame, the legs, I guess you can say. Uh, if the top is heavy enough, you could probably just build some sort of frame to hold the, um, the top. The point of the frame is that since we're, we have a smaller table, let's say this is the, this is the tabletop, we have a smaller table um, and it's only taken up like a quarter of the center. What may happen is if it's not, not supported by some sort of frame that sticks out like this past the edge, it's gonna wanna droop, right? Especially if you're resting your arms on it or something like that. So we could probably get away without doing the frame but it's not gonna be as stable and the whole point of this is to make it stable. She was using this stuff before and you could see it's very, it's not stable. <laughs> and that's the whole point, right? So this structure that we're gonna be building, um, this right here is the frame that I keep talking about, the subframe that I keep talking about. The outer square is the top itself and it is split right here in the middle. We have seven feet. So we have two pieces of plywood that are three and a half by five feet. And then we have all of these pieces here. So basically all it is is these pieces of one by two. There's more strength if it's positioned this way. If you put weight down on this side, then if you were to do this way, obviously, hopefully that's obvious. But first I'm gonna install these top and bottom ones, I guess on this image at least, top and bottom. And then these are all gonna be fastened together with um, pocket hole screws. So we're gonna start off by figuring out exactly where these are gonna go. We're gonna be using these holes um, to fasten the frame to the subframe. So therefore we need to find the center because this is the center of this horizontal piece here. Um, so we need to find the center of those planks. I don't think I mentioned this, I do want to try to do as little cutting as possible 
just because all of my tools are not actually set up properly right now. So um, I'm not gonna be showing you guys the cutting or anything. I'm gonna just tell you what I'm doing and then hopefully you guys can figure it out for yourself. Like I said, this is a very unique situation and table setup. So I doubt that anybody else out there has the same setup. I mean, I'll, I'll put, if you guys are interested, I could put in the description um, the exact table that I use and the wood that I use and all of that. Um, if you guys are interested in that, let me know. But let me get some uh, some measuring done real quick. These are the center. So what, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna drill out the hole for the inserts. So if you guys don't know what these are, they're basically, they're called threaded inserts. So what they do is um, you drill out a hole to the thickness of the inside here, not the threads, obviously. Um, and then the inside of these is, are actually threaded so that you can then insert a screw and then this will sit flush in here. Obviously you could just put a screw there, but I wanted to reuse these because these came with this frame, uh, the metal frame oh. for the table, the original table. So I figured, let me just reuse those instead of trying to figure out a whole nother way to fasten to this table. You wanna to try to find a drill bit that is the same as the uh, shaft on this. So you can see here that it is the same size as the inner part. Let's drill some holes. So the good thing about the two holes that I just drilled is that they don't have to be 100% perfect. Um, again, this is not a furniture piece. So all that I need to do is make sure that I have those holes first and then what I'm gonna go back and do once I have them on here, once I have it on here, I'm gonna fasten that and then mark where the other ones are, right? Try to straighten it out as even as possible and then mark where the other two are. And as long as those are straight, then once I put the inserts in, then they'll be straight. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense and I hope it works. <laughs> Haven't tried it yet, so let's see. So looking at it from the bottom, you can see the screws are right here. They'll go through and now we just need to mark up where that touches all the way in there. So we'll just put a little mark over there, maybe with a pen, I don't know if it'll fit or a, or a pencil, let's give it a shot. <laughs> there may be some better ways to do this, but let's see if this, all right, that's working. See if it worked. That looks like it worked. This, 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 this subframe or this frame here, this white piece is not actually perfectly square. We didn't really think it was gonna be square, right? That, would, that wouldn't be realistic. So the size of the pieces that we need across, uh, the four pieces are actually slightly off from each other um, by probably about like an eighth of an inch or a 16th of an inch. Um, so I gotta measure all four pieces individually. So we're gonna do that. But the advantage is, is that the outer pieces that we're gonna need that go here, that go here, uh, and are gonna support the pieces that go out like that. Basically, they're gonna go like that, right? So these pieces can all be pretty much the same size, which is a good thing, um, because then we could just cut like, what, 10, 12, 12, 16 pieces, however many pieces it is. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, and this is actually double, so eight, yeah. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then these, um, these side pieces as well. And if we have any extra, I may put some on the inside too, just for, you know, I don't think I'll need them, but just, just for fun, I'm gonna just put some extra stuff in there just to make it extra strong and all that. So let's get to some uh, measuring and cutting. I just wanted to show you guys something that you could do as well. If you wanted and you didn't mind a little bit of height on it, you could just simply do something like this. You could put it across this way. So we already built the frame this way so that we could support it outward. Um, but now you could just lay some pieces across the top, kind of like a bed frame, uh, how your bed support is underneath the mattress. So that's an option. I just don't think it's as elegant or, I mean, it's not really elegant what we're doing, but um, I just don't think it's as nice as what we're gonna end up doing. And uh, it's a little bit more fun the way we're doing it. So that's always fun, right? 
Hopefully I can finish today though. Okay, so uh, not quite done yet, but I did a bunch of cutting, okay? And uh, I figured something out. Um, I still had a lot to cut. I thought I, I thought I wasn't gonna have a lot, but um, I had to make a bunch of these pieces. So uh, you'll see that there's a taper here. Oh, and by the way, this is the uh, piece that she kind of used to have before. You can see it's very wobbly. It's not secure to anything. And it also has this like bend, this bow in the entire thing. So that's not great, but um, it gives me a nice work surface here to show you guys what's going on. I also removed the long pieces that I had already installed before because I wanted to add this taper right here to the edge. These pieces are gonna basically go like this, right? Um, and I didn't want a square edge here, so I just uh, chopped off a little uh, 45 degree angle there. All those pieces, this is basically how it's supposed to go. So we have the inner frame here. So this is that solid piece that goes all the way across. Um, and then the supports in the middle. And then these are gonna be here to support these guys because they're kind of the overhang, right? Um, now, one thing I didn't think about was how I'm gonna fasten this to here. So what I'm thinking I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just drill a hole right here and then go straight through this way, straight through this way, and so on. Um, Here's another thing I didn't think about, uh, which I actually made a mistake here, was uh, I drilled the pocket holes. By the way, if you guys don't know what pocket holes are, they go there. There's a, a special jig that you can get that you can make these holes, and they actually go all the way through like this. So the screw sits inside of there at an angle that way, um, and it helps support it. They're not the strongest joints, but they're fairly strong, and if you put enough of them in there, they're pretty good. So now I just have to assemble this for real and then drill out all of these holes here. And you can see the edge there, how it's gonna be. So if your legs are right here or something or you reach under, you're not gonna bump them. Okay, so <clears throat> I think I did it. Um, basically, let me get the drill bit. So here's what I did. I countersunk some screws in here at about a 45 to counteract this 45. We got two little holes popping out right there. So they're gonna go up against each other like that. The screw's gonna go straight in this way and it should work. Um, let's, let's hope. I know it's a little bit rough. I'm gonna just uh, kinda, not sand these, but kinda scrape this off a little bit. Um, this bit wasn't exactly made for going in at an angle like that. And I, <laughs> all the holes I basically made by, I, I did. Uh, I made them all by hand, so yeah, it doesn't have to be pretty. It just has to work and I'll be a little bit extra strong. Okay, so I'm practically done. The only thing that's left to do now is to do a like a topper type thing for it. We, we bought this, uh, you'll see it in a couple minutes. So we got a shower curtain because that was the only thing that we could find that would actually fit the dimensions of this. So. Let's go underneath and uh, <clears throat> I'll show you what we got going on. Um, you can see here what I did. I recessed some screws and then went up and through it and it was very difficult. I tried really hard to just not go too far um, and I think I did pretty good. I didn't get any poke throughs on the top and the tape, the, the, you can see I can pick up the entire thing right here. Uh, not the entire thing, but I can pick up this corner. Don't watch out for my cat's tail there. Oh, come on, Linky. Stop it, go away. We have the frame. We have some nice structure here if I push down on it. Um, and I think we're gonna be good. You can see uh, how big this thing is. I know it kind of just looks like we have a giant piece of plywood on top of a table, which is kind of what we have. We just have a little bit more structure with that little frame. Um, but like I said, you could just literally do that. Just go buy, out, go buy one of these um, and uh, and you're good. I would recommend if you are just gonna do the top, then just uh, possibly get a slightly uh, nicer plywood. Uh, you can go to the store and just kind of feel them. Just make sure it's one that's nice and smooth. Obviously the, um, the cabinet grade ones are gonna be nicer. This one was a little bit pricier and um, I think it was worth it. But in a few minutes, you'll see what we're doing with the uh, the fabric on top of it and hopefully that comes out good. We don't know if the shower curtain's gonna work yet. That's gonna be attempt one. It should be coming in in a couple days, but for you guys, 
it'll be like, you know, now, I guess. We ran into a little snag. Um, but it's not huge. It's, we ended up resolving it pretty okay. But uh, the snag was that that shower curtain didn't work. Uh, it just came in damaged. So we we're like, why don't we try like a big table cloth thing? I'm gonna be honest with you guys. That was my initial idea was a tablecloth. But for some reason, Mikachi was like, she looked for some tablecloths. She couldn't find any, any, any of the right size. Um, but then the day that the, uh, the shower curtain came in, which it was a good idea. Don't get me wrong. Mikachi thought of a good idea and it was like, hey, I was like, I didn't, I didn't second guess it. I was just like, all right, if you can't find a tablecloth, then that may work. Also, the big thing is that she wanted it to be waterproof in case something spills on it. We don't ruin the table underneath because we're going to most likely staple the top on or the cloth or whatever it is onto the top. It's not going to really be something that could easily be taken off and cleaned. So the, we ended up going with a tablecloth, an actual like cloth that is, um, you know, made for a table. This one is actually really large. I believe it was 92 by 74 or something like that, 76. If I'm remembering wrong, then um, you'll see it right here on the screen where the actual size is, but it's fairly big. It overhangs ever so slightly. So you can see here the table, this is gonna be about three inches off of this side, three inches off of that side over there, and then about, I think about five or six inches on each side, uh, the short way, this way. Obviously, you can see that there is a little bit of a, a problem here and we got all these dents. So what we're gonna try to do to fix that is uh, I'm gonna try to take a little bit of heat to them with a, with a hair dryer on the highest setting and then uh, just try to stretch it and hope that it works, hope that it, uh, it actually fixes the issue that we're having. Okay, so it may not look that much better right now, but um, it has flattened out a little bit more. And what's nice is that the heat does make a difference. It actually does make it a little bit more pliable. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna staple one side around. So I'm gonna fold this down as tight as I can, staple here or maybe on the other side, and then go to the opposite side stretch it as much as I can and then staple that side, you know, kind of one corner at a time or maybe work my way from one side to the other. There's probably a right and a wrong way to do this, but I'm not sure which one is wrong or right. So this is gonna be attempt number one. Um, I do also have some, get rid of some of this cat fuzz that's on this. I do have some adhesive as well. Um, I've had this for a while. I don't even know if it'll still spray out. It probably won't because uh, the end is pretty gunked up and has a bunch of cat fur and stuff on it. But um, that's an attempt that, oh, oh, I think it will spray. I don't want to spray it right now. This stuff's super tacky. Um, so that's going to be what we're going to do right now. And we'll see if, uh, if I can actually get it to uh to staple one thing we got to make sure we have is we got to make sure we have a somewhat similar uh distance here or amount of extra material on each side which looks like right now we don't so we're gonna pull this a little bit we're at about two inches roughly and this side probably a little bit more three so we'll pull out another half an inch over here Okay, so let me take a seat here. I'm, I'm exhausted. <laughs> so um, it's done. It's not perfect. There are a couple of little, you know, imperfections like here. I did not end up gluing this. I ended up just trying to stretch it as best I could. I think it'll be fine. Um, it's for making puzzles. You know, it's, it's not for, I don't know, surgery or something. I, it's just, uh, I think this is gonna work. Let's see what, uh, 
what Mikachi thinks about it once she sees it. But let's take a look underneath. This is how it looks from under here. So you can see I tried my best to stretch it and then staple it, fold it over the edges over here a little bit so that it didn't look too crazy. And uh, again, sorry I'm out of breath. It's been a lot of, uh, a lot of, surprisingly this was a lot of work. <laughs> um, it was a lot of pull, trying to pull this as tight as possible here and then popping a staple on it and then going on the other side, trying to stretch it as much as possible. If you guys are trying to do something like this, I would recommend just using a, um, a cloth, some sort of stretchy material if you want to do it this way. You could also just lay the cloth over it. You don't have to staple it. Um, we're doing this mostly because Mikachi likes to sanitize a lot of stuff, I'm assuming. Um, but also if something spills, it won't damage the wood. Um, you guys could just be careful and then you won't have an issue. But um, yeah, we have the nice little frame that we've built and now we have a nice uh, counter or table topper, I guess you can call this. There you have it. It is um, pretty much done. Let's see what the actual size came out to so we got five feet by a little over seven that's okay with me it being slightly bigger no big deal like I said when we started this it, it's not furniture it's just a usable top that she could do some puzzles on. All right, Meek. So we, you are in our ugly green hallway. Mm -hmm. um, and we're gonna see what you think about the table. <laughs> wow. So is it big enough? Yeah, we measured it, right? No, I know, but what do you think? Yeah. How the heck? I can't believe that this puzzle is really going to be this big. So yeah, there's a couple of spots that, you know, aren't perfect. But it's not going to make me nauseous anymore. It shouldn't. Because it's pretty stable. Here, sit. sit. <clears throat> How's it feel? Pretty good. Wait, I got it. What's in there? My puzzle. I thought the table was gonna flip over when you put that on there. Like, I'm, I'm, I still have that in my head. This is all for you. These are all the pieces that I separated. All the color-wise and stuff? These are the pieces, the, the all of the small pile that I put together. So, are you gonna do this now? No. <laughs> no. It's pretty dope though. Is it smooth enough? That's That was my biggest yeah. concern. It's good enough? Let's see. It'll work. Good. Thanks, Meek. You're welcome. This is my little vacuum for Ravensburger puzzles. Because they, they, Poop a lot of puzzle dust. Is there already dust on there? No, oh. but it works pretty good. Okay. It was like ten dollars. All right. We'll put a link for it. I don't know how Kaibox has done this whole video because everything's been kind of a secret, but I do plan on doing more puzzle things. Um, especially maybe hauls. Uh, I'm going to be doing some live streams where I work on puzzles. If you guys are interested in puzzle videos, let me know what kind of puzzle videos you're into and I could probably do it. Um, this table is gonna give me a lot of opportunity to do things like that and yeah, I think I'm gonna do my first puzzle stream very soon. It's probably gonna be done by the time you see this and uh, let me know what you guys wanna see if you wanna see puzzle stuff because it's a big part of my downtime. So that's it. Thank you guys for watching and uh, 
I really look forward to using this table. So thank you, Kyvox, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye, bye, bye. Nice.